Hey guys, uh, Mr. B here again, bringing you another video. So this is sort of continuing with the whole uh, LAN uh, video stuff. And this one's going back to the derivative of y uh, is equal to e to the x. Um, so the first thing that you might not recognize is that e is just a number. It's, you know, it's a long complicated decimal. Well, not really that complicated, but it's a long decimal. And it's sort of like pi. You know, we don't write out pi for doing calculations. We just leave it as pi. It's that's that's the exact value of it. So that's what we use with e. So no different than if it was 2 to the x or anything like that, besides the fact that it has, you know, a pretty easy derivative. Some might say the easiest derivative ever, especially compared with probably some of the stuff you've done in calculus up to now. So um, the derivative d over dx of e to the x is a very lovely e to the x. So really it the derivative of e to the x doesn't change at all. It's just e to the x. So it's kind of an interesting thing, and you can prove this using your uh, definition of derivative if you wanted to. You can probably look it up in any textbook if you need it. Um, but there are many applications of using this, and you see it a lot in first-year calculus, and uh, some of the derivatives can get a little bit tricky. So another form of the definition that, again, I show students in my calculus class is because chances are you're not going to get e to the x by itself. You're going to get e to the u, with u being something a little bit more tricky. So the derivative of e to the u with respect to x is e to the u. So whatever is there for that, so it's going to be something really complicated, times u prime, so the derivative of u. So let's have a look at uh, three examples and see how, see how it goes. So this is the first example. So I have a u that is 1 over um, x squared. So let's set up my derivative. So y prime, so my b to the u. So the derivative of this guy is going to be, maybe I'll just write my rule out here so you guys can have a look at it as I'm doing it. So the derivative of e to the u is e to the u times u prime. So e to the 1 over x squared times the derivative of 1 over x squared. So I'll actually write this out sort of like I've seen it before. So the derivative of this guy. So a lot of people have trouble with derivatives like this. So I'm just going to take a side over here. And if you're on a test or something, feel free to do this. So the derivative of 1 over x squared. So it's really easy um, to sort of forget how to rearrange this guy. So the easiest way to think of it is as a d over dx of x to the negative 2. So um, the derivative of this guy, we can just use the power rule. So we could subtract, subtract off 1 from the exponent. So it's going to become negative 3. And we tack on that power, negative 2, right in front. So it becomes negative 2, x to the minus 3. And then we can rewrite that guy as negative 2. A little bit too messy for my liking. Um, negative 2 over x cubed. So that's the derivative of 1 over x squared. So now I can re I can replace this guy with y prime is equal to e to the 1 over x squared times um, negative 2 over x cubed. And then I'll just rearrange that to make it look a bit neater. y prime is equal to e, I'll put the negative 2 out front here, negative 2, 1 over x squared, I'll divide by x cubed. So there's my derivative. So that's not too bad, right? As long as you know how to use that rule right here, I think for the most part it's pretty straightforward. Let's try another one. So this is often one you see, I'll make this one up. y is equal to e to the sine of x. So a lot of times you'll see um, a, tr a trig function as the exponent. So again, it doesn't change much. Uh, my y prime, I'll write the rule up here just so you guys can have a look at it. d over dx, e to the u is equal to e to the u times u prime. So my u in this case is sine of x. So e to the u, e to the sine of x times the derivative of sine of x. So the derivative of sine of x is cos of x, e to the sine of x times plus of x. And there it is. That's all there is to it. So it's a pretty straightforward derivative. My students really like working with uh, base e. 
Um, but a lot of times, it's not just this, it's, it's, it's within another rule, so it might be like, like the example I have here. This is an example where you'd have to use the product rule. So uh, this is a function f, and this is a function g that we have to use. So I'll just write the product rule up over here just so we can refer to it. y prime is equal to f p prime plus g f prime. So um, this is my f and this is my g. So what I have is, is y prime is equal to, and then my f is x squared, my g prime x to the negative x. So messy. Um, derivative plus my g is e to the negative x and times x squared. So really the only thing that might cause you a little bit of an issue is this guy right here. So, you know, x squared doesn't change. So the derivative of e to the x, so it's e to the negative x, then times u prime, so the derivative of negative x is negative 1. And then plus e to the negative x, the derivative of x squared is 2x. And then that's it. So now we just need to rearrange this guy a little bit. So I'll just take out the negative 1, put it out front here. So negative x squared, e to the negative x, plus 2x, e to the negative x. Messy, messy, messy. Let me fix that. e to the negative x. So that's my derivative. So we could factor out um, you know, an e to the negative x and an x here as well, but I don't really think that's necessary. Um, so that's it, guys. A um, couple of pretty straightforward examples of derivatives involving e to the x. They do get a lot more complicated, of course. Um, and maybe I'll do a couple of videos with those in them. But for now, um, good luck with your study, and I'll see you guys later.